Hello, my name is Emily Crow from Crochet Creations and welcome to my YouTube channel. I love to talk about all things yarn here on my YouTube channel. And today I've got a really cool roundup list of black size inclusive designers, both crochet and knitwear. probably know February is Black History Month, which is dedicated to remembering and honoring Black individuals, culture, and history, especially considering how whitewashed our world is. And I know that I have inherent privilege being a white person. So I wanted to make the time to learn more about and support some black fiber artists in our community. I've compiled a list of more than 15 size inclusive black knitwear and crochet designers to share with you today. There are so many black designers out there and I wanted to be specific in this roundup to include size inclusive black designers because size inclusivity is also really important to me. I feel that spending our money and showing support financially for the design who put in the work to make their designs size inclusive up to a 5x or a 6x will help to shape our fiber arts community to move more towards size inclusivity being the standard and not the exception. Disclaimer, this list is probably not exhaustive or comprehensive of every single size inclusive black designer out there. So if there's anyone that you would include on this list, definitely let me know down below because I would love to learn more about them. And let me just let you know my criteria for making this list to try to narrow it down because I couldn't do a roundup of like hundreds of black designers out there. To create this roundup list to kind of narrow it down to something sizable that I could talk about in one video. I included all knitwear and crochet designers who are black from any part of the world. So not just African Americans, but any black individual who is a knitwear and crochet designer who designs size inclusive garments. And I mostly looked at like sweaters, transitional pieces for spring, even a couple more summery pieces for like warmer weather folks. So for those size inclusive designs, they needed to reach a 62 inch bust size or chest size with the recommended positive ease also accounted for. So for example, if a design for their largest size went up to 62 inches for the bust size, but the recommended positive ease for the garment was 10 inches for easy math. That means that the largest size that could make this pattern would have to be a 52 inch bust size in order to get the recommended positive ease. And that's not size inclusive. So I also tried to account for the positive ease or negative ease that was associated with the largest size to make sure that every size could make the piece as intended up through a 5X person, not just a 5X like bust of the garment itself if that makes sense. I did my best to be thorough in creating this list and to be selective so that I could have a smaller list of black size inclusive designers, but please forgive me if I made any mistakes. I did my best and definitely let me know down below some designers you think that I should add on this list to maybe do a part two or other designers that you love that maybe don't make garments but are some really amazing black designers out there. Okay, let's get into it. I've got my computer right here so that I can look up my Ravelry favorites bundle that I put together with this list. And like I said, I have more than 15 designers on this list. So I'm gonna move through these really fast and definitely we can talk more in the comments below if you do want to talk more about some of these specific designs or specific designers. I'm gonna talk about the designers briefly and then mention just a couple designs that stood out to me that I would be interested in making or I think are worth noting so that you can get a little bit of a taste for this designer's style. So number one, let's talk about Tian Kanaten. And I do apologize if I pronounce this wrong. Tian Kanaten is a really cool resource for other knitwear designers. She has a lot of crochet patterns, which I think is really neat. And she has a pattern partnership mentorship type of program where she helps you as a budding designer to grow your skills, not just in creating your pattern, but also in marketing yourself as a designer so that you can grow your small business. I think she's a really cool resource. This first pattern I wanna talk about is the 32 Market Street Tee. I love this texture. It looks so wearable and fun to work up. This is a knitting design, which is really fun. I think she has some of both knitting and crochet. And what's really cool about this design is it goes up all the way to a 76 inch bust size. So that is well beyond the 5X size inclusive mark that I set, which is typically a 62 inch bust size. So 
many more people in the 6x and maybe even 7x bust size can create this pattern which i think is really neat another pattern by tian is the naysberry cardigan also not sure if i'm pronouncing that right but this looks like a really great transitional piece it is crochet which is really cool that I love designers who dabble in both crafts because they feel really accessible to me as someone who does both knitting and crochet. I love, again, the texture of this. It's got a really wide shawl collar construction on this short sleeve cardigan. So it's a really great transitional piece for the springtime. If you're looking for something to crochet in the spring months to just have another extra layer whether it's for texture or for just a little bit of extra warmth I think this would be great and what's really cool is this comes in 22 sizes that's amazing so it looks like the size increments are every two inches but that means that you can get a really specific fit for what you want no matter what size your bust is from 28 inches all the way to a 70 inch chest size I think that's really neat and that she did the work to create all those sizes and make them all available so that as a consumer, you don't have to do the math if you feel like you're in between sizes. I think that's really cool. This next designer is exclusively crochet. This is Creations by Courtney, and they have a ton of different types of patterns, whether you wanna make dishcloths, cowls, bags, dresses, other garments, hats, like there's just a huge variety on her site. And that's kind of where I'm at too. I like to make some of everything. And so that's definitely her style. Some designers are more selective in the types of things that they create, but she makes it all, which is really cool. This first pattern of hers that I want to highlight is the Winden, Winden, Winden. Oh man, I'm having a hard time with names today. Winden, Winden vest, like winding, but without the G, Winding, Winden. Winding vest maybe. I love the texture on this vest. And again, this is a great transitional piece for the springtime. For those of us in the Northern Hemisphere moving towards spring, the texture is phenomenal. I think this would be so fun to work up. And then Courtney also has this new design called the Kiera Crochet Dress. And it is published in Crochet Foundry, which is a digitally exclusive crochet magazine. I think it's a really cool resource to have size inclusive designs that are crochet only because there's a lot of knitting magazines out here in the world and there's also a lot of magazines that don't prioritize size inclusivity. Crochet Foundry definitely fills a publication gap in the fiber community. So this is such a cute dress. There's like a keyhole detail and it's got some really cool texture. It looks like maybe it's like an alpine stitch or something. It looks like it's a reversible dress, which is also fun to have kind of different looks. And like I said, it is exclusive for the Crochet Foundry magazine. It's part of the December 2022 issue, but the issue itself costs $8 and there's like half a dozen patterns. So it's definitely worth your money, even if you just want it for this one pattern. Okay, next designer is Noma Luvo or Bigger Than Life Knits. They have tons of patterns. They've been designing for a while and it's really cool to see they have so many. It says over 150 designs on just Ravelry that's listed there. So I'm not sure if there are any more elsewhere. She has lots of sweaters, lots of sock patterns, which is really fun. So I encourage you to go check out her store and take a look at the things that she has designed. The Sisypho is a sweater that stood out to me. I love the color work. It looks really wearable to me and also really fun to work up. It's a very graphic design, but also kind of dainty. It's not really big and chunky in the color work of it. It's kind of a more subtle is not the right word because it is very impactful, but it's not really big color work. It's a lot of small linear pieces that make this color work. If you know what I'm saying, I think it's a really pretty design and I could see myself having a lot of fun creating it. Another knitting pattern by Noma. This is the Bina or Bina sweater and it is a short sleeve tee sweater. It is in DK weight yarn and I love the color palette that she used for this design and the striping detail is really cool. This would be really good for a stash buster or if you are ordering from an indie dyer and you love a lot of colors but you can't buy sweater quantities of all of them. You can pick and choose so that you can have the yarn that you want to make this piece, which is really good for multiple colors. Tammy Gore is a really big name in the knitwear community. And I'm really pleased to know that she is size inclusive. She's got a lot of really cool 
color work designs. She uses color work often in her pieces. She's got lots of garments, also lots of shawls, which are really fun in their use of color too. So really cool. But I'm going to talk about garments today, not shawls. She is a knitwear designer and this is the Ridgeland Pullover. Again, I think that this color work is beautiful. You can see that her main color is a variegated and I feel like in color work, it's often hard to have variegated yarns incorporated, but I think that this is stunning. She did a great job in picking her colors and it's inspiring me <laughs> to find some way to use some variegated yarn as a main color in a color work sweater. It's got some more big graphic details, but also some smaller details. There's some really good balance within the design of the color work and some movement too with like the way that the chevron type pattern is pointing. I really, I really enjoy this pattern in the design sense. And then if you're looking for a more simple tee to maybe move into the spring or summer months, this is Avondale and it is a basic tea. It looks like it's a raglan. Yeah, it's a raglan from the top down and it's got this really cool lace detail along the underarm, like along the side of the garment. Really, really cool. Really great for as the weather warms up to be able to still wear your knitwear because it's a little bit more breezy with the lace. So cute. Lauren McElroy or Mother of Pearl Knits. She is so, so cool. She actually has a background in fashion design, which is very clear in the way she takes her photos and in the different design elements that she includes within her patterns. She's got a good variety of types of patterns. So really fun to look at. It looks like she's got a little of everything. She is a knitwear designer. And the first pattern I wanna showcase is the pine sweater. It's got this fun color work. Maybe I'm in the mood for color work. I'm talking a lot about color work sweaters right now. I think this is a really fun, simple texture that is very wearable and looks really fun to work up. There's also this tee, Circa 93 tee, that looks really, really fun. A little bit different of a construction, I think, than what I am used to. It's got like a cap sleeve and also like a turtleneck. It's got this cool, it might be a ribbed texture throughout the entire tee. So it just looks like a really fun piece to work up and it's different enough that it'll be kind of iconic in your wardrobe if you were to make something like this, but also not so far out there that only certain types of people could wear it. I think that this is a really versatile yet unique piece. This next designer, Designs by Key, and I will say, I'm not sure she might be revamping her online shop. There are a few designs on her shop that I was eyeballing that are no longer available. It says, just discontinued on it. So I'm not quite sure what that's about. Maybe she is finishing up her career as a pattern designer. So if that's the case, I would jump on everything that is still in her shop, but I will talk about a few things that are still available at the time I am filming this. Speaking of another spring summery tee, this is the Zinnia top. I love the flouncy sleeves. I love the peplum. This just looks so cute and flirty, very wearable. I love myself a V-neck. I could see myself wearing this. And it is crochet, which is so fun. We don't see as much crochet in the garment realm. And so really excited that she has a lot of crochet designs that are size inclusive. This next design, the Sprinter Cardi, this is super cute. I love the color blocking. Again, a really good way to use up some scraps or just random stash skeins that you can find that kind of coordinate with one another. Again, it's crochet and you cannot buy it on Ravelry. It's available from a different website, but the link is on the Ravelry page. So I'll make sure to put the link for the other website. I prefer using other websites if they're available to Ravelry websites, just to be more accessible. Next designer, we are moving through these fast because there are a lot of them. Kunbi Ayo Okunlawon. Kunbi has a ton of really fun accessories. I'm gonna be talking about garments today, but definitely check out her shop and take a look at all the accessories she's got. She's got hats, she's got scarves, she's got cowls, she's got bonnets, she's got all sorts of things. She is a knitwear designer and her first sweater, it's actually a bulky weight, but it's a short sleeve. So I'm not sure if there's a mod within the pattern to create a long sleeve sweater. It is a top-down yoke sweater and has a really fun texture. So definitely would be really interesting to work up. It says it uses slip stitches to create the texture, which I'm a fan of slip stitches. I know some people aren't, but I think they create a really cool play with texture and possibly color too. Her next sweater that I wanted to showcase is the Arewa short sleeve pullover. And 
It's an all over lace shirt design. It's a DK weight. So is it a sweater? Is it a shirt? I'm not quite sure, but it's just this really beautiful texture. If you like lace, you'll like this top and it would be really good for a transitional piece for the spring and summer, I think. All right, our next black designer is Natalie McHale. And this is Handmade by Talia. Did I say Natalia? Natalia McHale, because she goes by Handmade by Talia. There we go, that makes sense. She's got some really, really cool designs. Oh, is this a new one? I didn't see this. February 2023, I hadn't even seen this when I made this list, the Ahana sweater. It's got two different colors, like one color for the upper yoke, and then it switches to this really fun variegated. Ooh, that's so fun. Got balloon sleeves, crochet. We love worsted weight. So it'd be really easy to find yarn that would be suitable for this pattern. Love it. I will add that to my list because I think it's super cute. Gotta add that to my list of favorites. Another design that I want to highlight from Handmade by Talia is the Fallon cardigan. This has a really beautiful texture. This is a really wearable piece. It looks like it's created in pieces and with an applied like button band collar type of situation. I love this texture. Talia has a ton of really cool crochet sweaters. So definitely check her out because there's not enough crochet in the garment making community. At least it's not nearly as popular as knitting from what I've seen. So we gotta support those crochet designers. My next black designer is Natalie from Detroit Knits. And Natalie is so fun to follow on Instagram, she'll share a lot of whips that she's working on or things that she's making. She'll share why she frogs something and reworks it. She really spends a lot of time on the design process and making things just right. And she shares that along with you on Instagram. So check her out there for sure. But she does a ton of Tunisian crochet, which is kind of a blend between crochet and knitting. Really, it's just crochet. But instead of working one stitch at a time, you have multiple stitches on your hook at a time that you are working through. Doing so creates different textures than if you were just working one crochet stitch at a time. There's a four pass and reverse pass. So it's almost like you're working a typewriter going back and forth. It's really interesting. And it's a really fun way to stretch your crochet skills if you have not tried it before. So I definitely recommend one piece that I think would be a really great beginner friendly Tunisian crochet garment is the Tunisian desert top. It is just made in two panels and it's got this really fun texture and it's just seen together. It's a really simple construction and it gives you a chance to really experiment with some fun texture as you're learning Tunisian crochet. Natalie also designs regular crochet things too. And so she has this ramble sweater dress that is in We Crochet Magazine issue eight. Is that the one I have? No, I'm issue nine. Oh, bummer. But the ramble sweater dress, sweater dresses are just, they would take a while, but I would love to make one. I would love to wear one I know. Maybe I should add that onto my list. But I love the use of color blocking for the cowl neck and the sleeves. It looks like it's got a drop shoulder type of design. So this would be really fun to use. Pick your two favorite colors and crochet away on this dress. Rebecca McKenzie or Raging Pearl Wind. Super funny. I love these punny names. I feel not nearly as clever as I thought I did naming my channel Crochet Creations with my last name being Crow. <laughs> But Rebecca has a lot of garments. She's got a lot of shawls. She's got a, a good variety of pieces, but she does a lot more knitwear. Shawls and garments are kind of like her two big things, it looks like. This first design by her I wanna showcase is called the Stepping Stones Cardigan. It is knit and it is, I think size up to a 6X. It goes up to a 74.25 inches for the actual cardigan and in looking in the descriptions, it says that the recommended ease is one to six inches of positive ease. 74-ish inches minus six is 68 inches-ish, because there's that like 0.25 too. So it's about 68 inches would still be able to get the maximum recommended ease. So it goes up to like a 6X or maybe even a 7X. I'm not quite sure where that cutoff is. So that is super size inclusive. I love the lace detail. I think that the placement is really cute, having it be kind of on the sides of the front panels as well as on the ends of the sleeves. So you're not doing the texture the whole time, but enough to make an impact. Another pattern by Rebecca. This is Dainty Lion and I love this sweater. The texture on top is really so dainty and beautiful and intricate. 
doesn't look hard per se, but there's a lot of variety in the texture, which I think is really fun as a knitter to be able to work up a yoke with a variety of texture. Super fun and sport weight. So that would be a really good springtime sweater to make. I want to talk about Tiff Nealon, who I only recently discovered. Tiff is a great designer. I really love her sense of style. She makes a lot of classic type pieces with just a little bit of something different to make them unique and something special that you would make. She's not one to design something that looks like something everyone else has done, which I think is really cool. She's got a lot of hats and other accessories and lots of things that kind of coordinate, that use similar color motifs or similar textures to kind of tie designs together, which is a really cool feature of her design style. First and foremost, I want to highlight the sweater I'm wearing. This is the Split Decision Pullover that literally just came out like yesterday as I'm filming this. I saw this advertised for test knitters and I knew I had to make it. I loved this collar. It's like an asymmetrical design and it's honestly not hard to do. It was actually really fun. You can see there's like split cuffs. I'll make sure to pop up pictures because it's so hard to see. There's this really cool herringbone texture. Super, super fun. So I learned some new techniques and also had a lot of fun knitting this sweater up. It is DK weight held double. So I just picked two colors that I really liked and I thought coordinated well with one another. And then I made this sweater. It worked up so fast for me. It's perfect for lounging about the house. I get to still wear my knitwear, but also athleisure style. I think it's really, really cute. I can definitely dress it up with jeans, but I also feel comfortable wearing it just around the house, just for funsies. All right, another design by Tiff Nealon that I love is called Color Story. And again, the color work, I'm loving the color work. This would be a really great way to showcase a handful of colors that you really, really like together. Lots of really small color work detailing stripes along the yoke. So really fun way to kind of play with color and a little bit of like different color work styles. I'm not sure if it's like a mix and match. I think that if you are adventurous, you could probably play around with it. Our next designer, from my black size inclusive list is Shay Johnson, and she's actually a knitwear and crochet designer. I think I might only have knitwear for this video, but there are some crochet designs that you should definitely look into too. So this tee, it's the as if tee. I love how it looks like she used some mohair near the neckline to kind of make it more sheer. And then it says an air and weight yarn for the bottom part. The suggested yarn is not one I am familiar with. So maybe a worsted would work probably for that because Erin is just slightly thicker than a worsted. I love the juxtaposition of the textures and like having it more sheer on top and more modest where it matters. <laughs> I think that this is super cute. And what I really love about this design is that she recently updated this pattern. This is the 2.0 version. And now the pattern has a size inclusive size range. It was expanded up to 64 inches for bust or 162 centimeters, which is awesome. I think that as we hold designers accountable and encourage designers to be sizing their patterns up through a 5X at a minimum, we can gradually change the library of patterns to be more size inclusive. And it's really cool to see how Shay has responded to that need and done the work to size up her pattern. I think that's awesome. So we should support that. Another pattern by Shay is the Studio 54 crop. And this is a wrap around crop top piece. And this would be really good for the spring. It's got three quarter length sleeves. And again, with the wrap, it would be easy to take on and off for layering, etc. So this would be really good as a transitional piece. The next designer I wanted to make sure to mention, even though I have already mentioned them in a previous roundup for crochet designers, I'll include it up here in the card so you can check out that video. But this is Susanna BIA. And just really quick, I wanna talk about, there's one design that she recently came out with I didn't talk about on my last roundup with her. This is the Colleen Ball Sleeve Sweater. It's got this really fun filet crochet, lacy type detail on the bell sleeves as well as on the bottom hem of the top. This just looks so beautiful, feminine, and just really fun. I think that this would be fun to wear with the bell sleeves and really elegant. And so there's lots of other designs that she has. I wanted to talk about that one because that one was new, but definitely go check her out. And I talked about her and a couple other designs of hers on a previous roundup video. So check that out too. Nanre Ojukutu is my next 
black designer. She is known as LA Knits Apparel, which I have definitely recognized from Instagram. So I hope you have too. She has tons of accessories, especially hats, tons of hat patterns. So if you love to knit hats, she's where you go. But she also has some garment patterns, which is fun. This is the Chella Chunky Sweater. Again, size inclusive, like everything here. This is just a really fun basic sweater. It looks like it's got almost more of a boat neck. It is knit. It's got some interesting cuffs and hem. It looks like almost knit and garter. So it's a fun, different texture, which is really neat to have for a basic sweater. And then if you're looking for some more warm weather makes, this is the Wura Tee. And it's got some really fun lace on the sleeves. It looks like a top-down raglan. So it's on the sleeves as well as on the bottom hem of this top. So there is plenty of stock in it to enjoy, but also some fun lace. We are getting close to the end here. I want to share about Gabriella Treminio. If you've heard of Hello Gabriella, she has an online shop where she does, where she has digital project. She has an online shop where she sells digital project. She has an online shop where she sells digital products. I'm having a really hard time saying that. Stickers, things like that, but also knitting notions and stitch markers, things like that. And she's done a lot of collaborations with other small businesses. So I've seen her name around, but she is also a designer, which is so fun. This first sweater I want to talk about is the Simone Pullover. It's got this really fun texture along the top, lots of more bulky and graphic type of texture. It is an Aran weight, so like a heavy worsted weight of yarn. And so it makes those textures pop out a little bit more than something that's knit in like a DK weight or like a fingering weight yarn. So if you're looking for some really big texture, this would be the piece to go for. There's another pullover that I really liked called the Bobby Pullover, and it is a short sleeve sweater, but it's got bobbles all over, so super fun to make. It would definitely be a yarn guzzler, so be aware of that. But it's a really fun texture, and having it all over is just a really iconic look. And here is someone that I've heard named throughout the fiber community, but don't know if I've actually recognized her patterns before. This is Sylvia Watts Cherry. She's a UK designer and she has been published in a ton of different magazines and websites. So she has her own like Ravelry shop, right? But she has a lot of her designs in other publications. So it might take a little work to track down the design you're looking for, but definitely worth it because she is a really well-known designer. The first pattern I want to talk about is called True Stripes and it is in the recently published 52 Weeks of Easy Knits. This is just a really fun striped pullover. I like how the directions of the stripes change from the body to the arms kind of continue that striping and the pockets are in a different orientation. So it's really fun, really graphic. And so this would be really fun to use up some scrap yarns. And then another design that I really loved of hers was the Mino pullover vest or the Mino pullover vest. It is fingering weight and it's got this beautiful color work that is so mesmerizing to look at. I'm sure it would be so fun to knit. It would take a while, but it is stranded color work. So not as bad as in <laughs> And this looks really, really fun. I do need a vest or a slipover in the, my wardrobe, I think. I love this design. And then last but not least, this is our 17th size inclusive black designer. This is Olive Tunisarum Egbukulum. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I do apologize if I am struggling with some of these names that are unfamiliar to me. Her username is Yarnpunzel. So if you've seen her website or her on social media. She's got a variety of patterns and she is a crochet designer. She's got some really fun summer designs especially and I tried to choose the ones that were more like light sweater or like tea type patterns that are more transitional for the spring rather than tank top patterns though she has plenty of those so definitely check her out if you're looking for some crochet wear for the summer months. This first pattern is the Amarim blouse. It's got this really fun texture up top. It just adds a little bit more interest to the yoke compared to the body of this top. I think this is really fun. It is fingering weight, so it is very lightweight. It's like a basic top, but then has a little bit extra something with the texture. And the last pattern I want to showcase is the Retro Stripes tee. Again, it's crochet and it's got a really fun set of stripes right here. And it looks like it's got some really short sleeves, not quite cap sleeves, but not much more than like having like a wide tank type of a top. So definitely great for the warmer weather as things are warming up. Again, it is fingering weight yarn. 
I love me a fingering weight garment because it makes it really wearable for the warmer months. So this is really, really cute. Oh, it looks like the stripes only on the front. That's fun. A little bit different of a design. Awesome. So there you have it. More than 15 size inclusive black designers. Knit and crochet, I tried to have a variety and I'm really pleased to see that there is a variety of makers out there that fit the criteria for this roundup. If you have any more designers that you would recommend that are size inclusive and black to celebrate during this Black History Month, definitely let me know down below and we can have a good conversation down there of some really amazing black designers. Definitely let me know down below your favorite black makers so that we can highlight all of them because I couldn't possibly create a video highlighting them all so that hopefully we can all learn about some new to us designers. Thank you so much for being here and I'll make sure to have links down below so that you can check out the shops of these awesome makers. And until next time, happy making. Bye.